Hey kiddos, Mrs. Scotch here. I'm going to show you here basically the basics of iMovie, the new iMovie and how to import and add sound, text, title to your film. So this is for anyone to use. And if you wanna learn more about special effects such as green screen, fast forward, slow motion, look for some more of those videos in this playlist. So to start out here, I have opened up iMovie. It looks a little bit different. The first thing that you need to do is always create a project and an event. So here you could either do file, new movie, but usually I just like to go to create and hit movie. So you will have here all these different themes. You can watch the theme, themes, it's really cool. I usually stick to no theme to make things simple. So I would hit create and you have to give your theme, a, your movie a name. So here I will call this sample movie. And we'll get into the event in a little bit of a second, but it will. Uh, the event is also just as important. So create my movie, that's done. And what happens is once you have your movie, you need to make sure that you also have the footage that goes into it. You cannot do anything up here. You have to put everything in your timeline. Now, the problem with the new iMovie is that it tends to compile things all together unless you make a separate event. But to make a separate event is actually quite easy. You would go here into new event, file, new event, and you would title it the same name as your project. So I would title mine sample movie. It really just helps keep everything separated and it's more organized for you to find. So either you can make your event first and then your movie or your movie and your event, it doesn't matter. The next step is obviously you need to import your media. So this is either when you would plug in your iPhone, your iPod, or put in your SD card from your camera to transfer your stuff iMovie is really good about popping up the import box, but here, this is where you can click import media, import media, and it will bring up where you can import your stuff. Always make sure that you are importing to the right event, and then here it'll show you all the different kinds of way you can import something. You can do a camera, so here Mrs. Gatch, it's gonna show up, or you can do from your computer. If you're saving something to your desktop, make sure that you're not under Macintosh HD, that you are on your desktop. If you go into home, this opens up all of your folders. And Mrs. Sketch actually has something in downloads. So if you open up downloads, it'll show you all of the footage you have. And the most recent one here for me is the summer time lapse. So I'm gonna go ahead and import that. So I have the right event. I have where I need to be and let me import my selected. Now, one thing that I do really want you to pay attention to is this up here. This is showing you when it's done fully processing into your iMovie. Sometimes it will take much longer if you have a higher quality or a longer video. But now I have my film here. It looks really nice, I can watch it. It actually has music, but I'm gonna delete that. So here is this film of summer time lapse. So I'm going just going to take mm, the beginning. And I only say I want 45 seconds. You can sel like you select, drag what you want. And once you have it, you select, and I just bring it onto my timeline. So it is, you can watch what it looks like. You can pause by hitting the space bar. Listen to it. There's several things you can do. First thing is I'm actually going to lower the volume of this. Here, you see where I'm selecting, adjust volume. You can make it really loud or absolutely not there. So then now we can watch it. So here is your movie, yay! There's usually a lot more that needs to be done and a good way to do it is by opening up your adjust menu. This used to be in a different place in the old iMovie but now they have it at the top. So you have here, you can deal, you can change color. One thing that I really like about this now is if you wanted to make something more saturated, you can click it and really heighten these colors or make it really dull if I wanted it in black and white. By using that button, change the tone, brightness. Um, you can also crop things out. So if I wanted a certain section, I can take this and put it there and it would only feature that part in the video. If I wanted a Ken Burns effect, I could do a Ken Burns effect, but I'm gonna just stick with fit because this is a movie. When you have a photo, make sure just to uh, import, to take care of the Ken Burns effect. So as you can see here, I can add video or audio effects. This is a really interesting, if I wanted this to be a raster, I've actually never seen that before, day and tonight, it would change what it would look like. 
Um, I could also do sci-fi, negative, sepia. There's tons and tons of video effects as well as audio effects. But because I have no audio here, it really isn't going to work. So let's get into some basics. Here, my music, my video used to have music, but now it no longer does. No worries though, I can go ahead and there's several ways that I can add that in. I can go to where it says sound effects and add in anything that I want. So if you scroll down and you go to jingles, it will give you different timed sound effects. You can listen to them. That doesn't quite go with it. But it's really fun. Tons of jingles, sound effects, like I said. And the best part is these are all creative comments. So whatever is here, you are welcome to use. Um, it does open up your iTunes, but here is one issue with iTunes. Unless you are, let's say, Adam Levine or Corinne Billy Ray or Ella Fitzgerald, you can actually use this music in your film unless you have written permission from them. And I will tell you, Ella Fitzgerald would be really hard because she's not alive. So while iTunes, even though you have bought the music, it doesn't mean that you can use it in a film for reproduction. So stick to your sound effects. If you've made a song in GarageBand, the song would be listed here. So another way some people like to download, there are Creative Commons songs. Mrs. Gatch has a blog post actually where we could find this. And I have put this link at the, in the descriptions of this video. But here I list four websites where you can download music for free. It's really, really useful. One of my favorite ones actually is called, uh, is the YouTube Audio Library. No one really knows that there's an audio library where you can download tons of songs, but it is here. You can pick by genre, mood, instrument, how long you want it to be. It really, really helps out a lot. So the way you would do this is, let's say, I want a, um, I want a calm mood, and it will pick up all of the calm songs, and I can actually listen to it before I download. I think this actually will be perfect. So I will go ahead and download. And this is the best part. You could import your media into your movie, where I would go import, go back to downloads. The song should show up. And now this is, what was the name of my song again? Stalemate, all right. I could do it this way or a way that's even closer is actually just drag it in. Select from your downloads and put it in here. That's the way that I usually tend to do it. And then now you can watch your video with the music. With music, you can turn it up, make it really loud. You can turn it down. You can also do something where you fade in here. I could fade it in by selecting this little button that doesn't want to be selected. So when it starts, as it comes up, it's a really nice effect for introducing. I can shorten this, which obviously it does need to be shortened. And I can also do a fade out. So you can add, like I said, this is Creative Commons music. It's free to use, and you, as long as you give it, uh, uh, attribute to it on your YouTube. Also, I, maybe I want a title or credits. So here, there's two things that you can do. You have your title selection, which is really good, um, but I, well, there are some frustrating things about the titles in iMovie. For example, if you select one like Gravity, so I select it, you can watch it. You cannot change the text of the title. Some people would like to change the color or the background, and we don't have that option. Um, I do know for this one here, centered, you can change it. So this is a good one to start out with. So you can do one of two things. You can start the title. If you put it on top, it's going to play during your film and the movie. So here we can, it will, it will. Or you can start it before. So if you put something on top, it's going to play within your film. But if you drag it forward, it will play before it. And then here, if I wanted to change my text, this is where I would go. I can pick all of the text that I've downloaded. So I really enjoy, hmm. These are here, but you could actually show all of your fonts if you have downloaded some. And they all show up here. So 
Mrs. Sketch has a great love for different kind of fonts that are not on iMovie. So I'm going to choose this one here. All right. So you select it and then you start typing. So summer, oh no. All right, let's select this and make sure that now I go back to the one that I've downloaded. And we'll actually, we'll change it. You can center it. You can change the color, which is actually really nice. You could do a bright pink, red. You can custom make colors. I'm gonna stick with white because it is the simplest, and actually the quite nicest. Um, Make it bold, make it bigger, smaller. You really have control over this. So that is one awesome deal about uh, get, getting able to customize your title. But there are some excellent ones as well. I have several students that tend to enjoy line. It does look really nice. Try not to, unless your movie is a fun, funking one, when you pick stuff like these, it can make your movie sometimes look a little bit corny. So stick ones that look clean and concise and don't take away from your film. So here I have it. I can shorten how long it is. Like I said, I can put it back on top. I can put it at the end. That's pretty much how it goes. Um, you also have backgrounds. There are some really, really neat backgrounds where you can do globes, where you travel from one country to another, or you just have these fun little backgrounds. One thing I will say is that, oh, it's just going to pull it up here for us. Great. So if you wanted to check it out, um, you can say what country you go to. So I would start San Francisco and choose, and you can type anywhere. So why don't we just choose the great country of Singapore? And there it is. And it will actually show you us traveling. Aww. It's pretty neat. So have fun with your backgrounds. Make sure that they actually make sense and they go with your film. For example, if I have a depressing movie, I probably would not use blobs as a title background. Let's just go ahead and think about that. So all said and done, I have my film. Um, I have my title. If I wanted to add some transitions in, transitions are really nice, a way to move between shots in your film to give the illusion of time passing or introducing a new setting. But truly, a cut is the simplest way. I will say that a nice way to start your film is always from a fade in. So you can either do a fade to black. So you can put it at the beginning. You can't really tell here because this is already black. Or you can do a fade to white. Fade to white would look like this. Um, and also, always have a fade out at your end of your film. It really adds a nice quality to it. Um, I would avoid using the circle close open unless there's a very specific style that you're going for. And they could be very distracting, but cross zoom, a ripple is usually a nice effect, and these four on top are nice ones. So you're done with your project. It looks great. Now all you have to do is this. You just have to export it. To export, you would go to share. And then you would go to either YouTube or save the file, but because I like to make things simple, I would just download straight into YouTube and it will pop up and you can write what your movie is about. So I would title sample movie. Um, you can choose whether it's public, private, or enlisted, the quality you'd want to download at. So I always choose the highest quality possible. Um, and make sure to choose the right account to download to. And people always mess this up, especially at school. When they say their account name, they'll just type in what their username is. So mine would say it'd be gatch12345. And then they would log in and it doesn't work. You have to make sure to type in your entire email. So it would be gatch at sas.edu.sg. And then when you hit OK, it will, it will download. So I would hit Next. And then I would come up saying, yes, all this copyrighted stuff is mine. All this stuff is mine. No copyrighted things used. And then you would go to publish. But I'm actually not going to publish this because I don't need it on YouTube. So I hope this really helps you in creating any kind of film that you want in iMovie. I want you to have fun with this. It's a, I can give you all the tips in the world. But honestly, it's when you start experimenting with it that it becomes your own. So check out the other videos Mrs. Gatch has made to know how to do green screen, fast forward, and other special effects. Have a great time. Good luck.